Good afternoon. It is one o'clock or nearing that time. I know a few of you are in here. Uh, hopefully we'll uh, let a few more uh, seconds go by for others to join. Uh, again, I try to be as punctual as I can to get my start. Uh, as you notice, uh, uh, now we got one eyeball. Okay, now we're going. Uh, so I, as I try to start as punctually as I can, uh, this one doesn't have an ending time. The other ones that w w we're trying to get within uh, 30, 30 to 45 minutes, uh, this one is just going to be whatever uh, time we need to take. It's a time for conversation, a time for encouragement, a time for uh, God's Word. Uh, it's a time where you can uh, share your comments there. Uh, I will n take note of them, and uh, some of them I will express out loud. Uh, also, you will note, if you were with us last week, uh, when we get to the time of prayer, uh, we, we will uh, just let you type in your prayer requests. I will have uh, that time of prayer. I will mention specific ones that I've got written down, including ones from last week. Uh, but then, uh, then I will go silent and you can just type in your special requests. Uh, if you can, uh, type a name with it. Uh, that way then we can lift them up in name in, in future times that we gather together. Uh, it was very interesting at the at middle of the night last night. I don't know what time it was because I didn't look at the clock. Uh, it sort of hit me uh, that today, today's theme is uh, basically uh, cries and calls. Uh, and, and, and as we have a psalm to begin and a psalm to end, uh, we're really going to hit on that sense of cry and call. Uh, so as uh, we have people uh, come, still coming in, uh, it's sort of like me at the uh, worship service. Uh, give you a little insight for those of you that worship at All Saints. Uh, if you see me ramble on when I welcome, it's usually because I see people come, still coming in the doors. Uh, both the front doors and the sanctuary doors. So I try to roll that out as long as I can before we get to our time of prayer. Uh, so as I cannot see faces, I can only see uh, people's little logos popping up. Uh, I can see we have about 12 with us this day uh, and, uh, and hopefully others will join us. So uh, as we begin, uh, we begin in the way we always do in the remembrance of our baptism. We begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us bow our heads. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for a time to come together, a time to share uh, in your word, a time to share in our greetings with one another, uh, a time to just uh, visit uh, but most of all, for your presence to be made known. Now, Heavenly Father, as we gather together for this time, uh, let your word fall upon us. Let your Holy Spirit dwell within us and prepare us for that which you uh, have us to do, uh, not only to live out our life, but to proclaim our faith. We pray this all in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I do want to let you know of uh, opportunities that, com that come with uh, All Saints Lutheran Church. Some of you are fully aware of them. Uh, some of you, you might have seen me post some things about them. But again, if, if you want to have other encounters, uh, I've, I've shared with our, our members that they have 14 opportunities to be in the Word. Uh, this, is, this is more than what we normally have here at All Saints. So what a great opportunity is God has blessed us uh, to be able to do ministry in a variety of ways. And there's two formats. Uh, we're, we're doing the, the video formats uh, through Facebook Live. Uh, plus, we're also doing emails. So on uh, obviously, besides this, this opportunity, uh, we have three opportunities during the week. On Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, all of them at 10 o'clock. You can access uh, by liking the All Saints Lutheran Church website. Uh, our, I mean, our Facebook page, excuse me. Uh, if you like our uh, Facebook page at All Saints Lutheran Church, Blairsville, Georgia, uh, then you'll get the notifications when we're going live at 10 o'clock on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. On Monday, uh, you sort of see the Cats and Jammer kids or Laurel and Hardy or Abbott and Costello uh, doing Bible study. Uh, it's a Bible study 
uh, interaction between Jack and myself. And, and again, we hope that uh, others of you can do what you're doing now, just typing in if you got a question or a comment to make. Uh, but uh, we did that for the first time last Monday and it went really well. Uh, we, we're trying to hold that to 45 minutes, so join Jack and myself tomorrow on Facebook Live on the All Saints Lutheran Church web, uh, Facebook page. Also on Wednesday, we do uh, our worship uh, for the week. Uh, as, as many congregations are doing it on Sunday, we're doing it on Wednesday uh, at 10 o'clock, uh, again on the All Saints Lutheran Church Facebook page. Uh, and, and right now we're in the midst that, of that Lenten service and the, the sermon is being preached from the lessons assigned. So if you listen on, if you watch on Monday, it's a great opportunity then to hear that, that sermon being proclaimed on Wednesday. And then on Friday, uh, this is the last week that I'm going to be doing my teaching series on the book Above All, a book by J.D. Greer, which says that we need to get back to having the gospel predominate what we do in the church and what we proclaim from the church. Uh, so uh, this Friday will be that last one at 10 o'clock, and it will be chapter 6 in the conclusion of the book. Uh, I also uh, want to invite you, and I posted it uh, the other day on this Facebook page, but I want to invite you to an opportunity. Uh, I, along with three or four other Union County pastors, on Thursday, we're going to have a, a time of a word, a time of just, we're not doing sermons, we're just doing a word and a proclamation off that word, and then a time of prayer. Uh, as we join together our hands in the community. We've been praying for an opportunity to come together. And this Thursday at 10 o'clock, if you would go to www.fellowshipofthehillsga.com, uh, you can access uh, Fellowship of the Hills, uh, their website. And on there, there's a little arrow that says live feed. Click on that arrow and, and then you'll be able to go into uh, that, that live feed this Thursday at 10 o'clock. We also, if you want to get the emails from All Saints Lutheran Church, uh, I send those out weekday. Uh, we do a sermon in five parts in the morning. Uh, that is the proclamation of the previous week's sermon in five parts. And then also in the afternoon, I'm doing, uh, like I've titled this one, it's a PM pause from PD, uh, from Pastor Dave. Uh, and if you would like to receive those and you're not currently receiving them, all you have to do is send an email uh, to ASL Connecting, all one word, ASL Connecting at gmail.com, and we will send those out to you. Uh, so as we begin, I would, as we're going with uh, call and cry and call, I begin with Psalm 130. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. O Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my pleas for mercy. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness that you may be feared. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in his word I hope. My soul waits for the morning, more than watchman for the morning, more than watchman for the morning. O Israel, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love, and with him is plenteous redemption, and he will redeem Israel from all his iniquities. What a wonderful psalm as we cry out to the Lord in this time of the coronavirus, in this time of pandemic, in this time of being isolated. Um, I, I choose to use the term physical distancing. I don't like the term social distancing because exactly what we're doing right now, uh, we are coming together socially right now. Uh, using those forms in which we can do it. Uh, but we're trying to maintain our physical distance in, in order to, to flatten the curve as they've been telling us to do. So uh, we thank you for this opportunity. So as we cry out to the Lord, we know he hears our voice and we know there is plentiful redemption uh, with him, not only to get us through times like this, but especially uh, as he draws us together in the word with whatever we're experiencing uh, in any moment of time, but ultimately we know the salvation that comes through him. So I ask you a question, as we've been going this for about two weeks now, uh, where are you simply frustrated? 
Uh, I know one of my frustrations, uh, some of you that know me, uh, one of my frustrations is not being able to go to Grumpy Old Men Brewery uh, on Thursdays for karaoke and, uh, and beer. Uh, in fact, uh, the, the beer that I take, it, that I uh, enjoy, is a 50-50 split of their chocolate wheat ale and their IPA. Uh, it, it could be called the cho chocolate grasshopper, but uh, we affectionately call it the Pastor Dave. Uh, I haven't been able to do that for three weeks now because Sally and I were uh, at a retreat the week prior. So uh, that would be the place where I would say that I am simply frustrated, uh, along with not seeing all the people here at All Saints. What about you? Uh, where, where have you simply been frustrated in this time of uh, isolation, in this time of uh, uh, physical distancing from people. Anybody out there? Uh, either my screen has quit showing all your comments or nobody's commenting. Well, if nobody comments, uh, I will keep moving on uh, because obviously when, when we sometimes get simply frustrated, uh, the blinders get put over our eyes and we can't see things. Uh, there you go. Thank you, Linda. Uh, she says, getting needed supplies. Yes, we know that. Uh, Lisa is saying the conflicting reports. Uh, Pam, you miss Holy Communion. Exactly. Uh, Mary Jean, being lonely. Uh, Mary, uh, hanging, hanging to st having to stay in, I would, I would think. Uh, as, as we see agreements with all these, the stores being out of food, uh, being out of food, being out of hand sanitizer, being out of toilet paper, being, it, it's, yes, exactly. Uh, Martin, your frustration, uh, people who do I want, uh, oh, it just went past me too fast. Uh, I'll get back to yours, Martin, uh, at some point. Um, see if I can do that here. Yep. Uh, who do not, who don't want to believe that this is a real thing. Exactly. Yeah. So, some uh, think it's made up. Uh, they they want to get out there and uh, don't realize, exactly, Martin, they don't realize the choices that they make, how they impact uh, others. And, and as I've told people in our congregation, um, this is an opportunity not, not to see what pain and distress this is causing me, but this is a chance for me to love my neighbor by doing those things. Martin, you've got it. This is a chance to love my neighbor by doing those things that I'm being asked to do to keep this spread from going. And so if, if we could have God change the way we view things, and, and that's a great segue, and instead of being simply frustrated, where have you had some surprising joy? Uh, where where have you seen some things that maybe you would have missed it because of the circumstances? Uh, where is some of that surprising joy that you have seen? Uh, I know for me, it was last Monday with Jack and myself as we uh, went online for the first time. Uh, we had, at least the last number I looked at, we had close to 300 people who had watched our Bible study. Uh, amazing. Uh, we, we have maybe 15 people on a normal Sunday with either Jack or myself teaching, um, but we had close to 300. That is amazing. Uh, Linda says, being able to help out with the create, with creating medical masks. And I'm going to lift that up in prayer, Linda, uh, later on. Yes, we've got a number of women in our congregation, but throughout Union County that are making medical masks because of the low supplies. And so what a great opportunity. And as Linda says, it's a social online opportunity also. And I've seen some of those outreaches uh, for that. So uh, please, please keep note of that. Or if you want to, uh, send an email to uh, uh, aslconnecting at gmail.com. And uh, we can, we can uh, tap you into a way of, of getting those uh, masks uh, Lisa, watching the changes in church. Um, yeah, I, I hope so. Uh, as I've been preaching, this, uh, we've been praying for reformation. We've been praying for revival. Uh, God has given us that opportunity. Uh, God has given us that opportunity to, for his church to change, uh, just as Martin Luther did. And, and what an amazing time back with, with Martin Luther that uh, as he brought about that reformation, 
how it coincided with the the uh, invention of the printing press. Now, uh, with with all the social media out there, what a great chance, uh, Martin. You're you're finding joy digging deeper into relationships, uh, re re relishing the ability to slow down and actually interact. Isn't that the truth? We, it, we're, we are having to slow down. Uh, it's amazing for me. I've gotten a greater workload, but it's it's a workload that I enjoy doing, preaching and teaching. Yes, I don't get to have the physical relationship, the physical contact, but uh, again, uh, some of you that I have had relationships with in the past, you're re-engaging, we're reconnecting. And who knows what God's going to do with this. Uh, that as as I'm being fed uh, with with you guys tapping in, I hope that I am feeding you. We know through God's word we're all being fed. And yes, as we've said before, that not being able to have Holy Communion. And I want to again reiterate to those who are members at All Saints Lutheran Church, if you desire Holy Communion, I do want to provide that for you. There's two ways in which we can do it. Either uh, call me up and I can make a uh, home visit if you are too fearful of, of coming out into the public and, and doing that. Uh, I, I will come to your home and we can have a time uh, of, of interaction, a time where I can share God's word with you and a time of confession and absolution and a time of Holy Communion. So I can do it that way. Or if you don't fear going out, you can tag it along. Now, I know some of you are making all your trips in one time. If you if you want if you're going out to go to the grocery store, call me up ahead of time and I will plan on being here at the church and we can commune you here at church. Uh, so again, for those of you that are missing that opportunity of Holy Communion, uh, and, and we can, we can make that happen. Um, so as, as, as we, as we can do our best of not letting the simple frustrations cloud our eyes, if we, if we can let, uh, uh, God take those blinders off of us so that we can see the surprising joys that are happening, uh, Keep, keep that in mind and keep looking for those surprising joys, especially uh, even today we might have missed here in Georgia. Uh, we're getting into the mid-70s, 80 degrees sunshine. We haven't had a lot of sunshine lately. We've had a lot of rain this winter, and it's great to have a nice day like this, uh, just simply to go out and enjoy it. And, and as I talked to one of the members uh, the other day who lives near one of our lakes, she said, boy, there were a lot of people out on the lakes. So Jack, that, that might be a bit of advice for you to go out and do some of your fishing uh, and your contemplation of the Lord out, out there. It uh, doesn't make a difference if you catch any fish, but I, I know uh, the Lord will touch your heart by doing that. Well, as I tried last week, we're going to try again this week. A few uh, bits of humor or lack thereof uh, I want to share with you. One of, one of them is a story about three uh, boys that grew up together. And uh, as they grew and moved out of the house, uh, they became quite successful. And so each one of them in their own way wanted to take care of uh, their their elderly mother. And so the one decided to build her this nice house, uh, six, seven rooms, uh, just all, all whatever a house could have. Uh, and, and, and he uh, was proud to boast about that to the, uh, the two brothers. Well, the middle child, uh, he, he decided to get her a Mercedes limousine with a driver. And so she didn't, wouldn't have to worry about going anywhere, that she could just ask the driver and he, uh, he would take her anywhere that she pleased. The last one uh, knew how much his mother loved scripture. And so what he did was he had uh, his uh, elders at his church train this parrot and this parrot, they, they trained the parrot to memorize all of Scripture, to recite all of Scripture. And, and so all the mother needed to do was to ask for the, the book, the chapter, and the verse, and the parrot would recite it for, for them. Well, after a, a little while, the, their mother contacted all of them with, with a brief little note of thanksgiving. Well, the first son who had built the house, uh, she commented, I don't need such a big house. In fact, I only really use one room, uh, but then I have to clean this whole huge mansion. 
well, quite depressing for her. The, the second son, he, she said, I don't go out anymore. I don't really need a limousine. I don't need a car, let alone that, that limousine driver is quite rude. Well, the note of the third son, she said, son, you really know what your mother loves. And boy, that chicken was delicious. Yeah, I'm hearing crickets. I'm hearing crickets. Uh, we'll try another one. Uh, th this one. This one is about a frog. And you have to use your imagination a little bit. It's, it's a frog who can speak. Well, he, he, thank you for the, the laughs over there. Uh, uh, this is a frog who can speak and he goes into a bank. Uh, and, and, and the frog wants um, a loan of $30,000 uh, for in order to go on vacation. Well, as he walks in, he walks to the, the teller station and uh, notice that her, her, the teller's name is Pat Patricia Wack. And he said, Miss Wack, uh, I, I've come in to apply for a $30,000 loan so I might take a, a, a holiday. And obviously, Miss Wack looks at this and can't believe her eyes that it's a talking frog, uh, but nonetheless asks the frog his name. Well, it's, of course, Kermit. But it's Kermit Jagger. And yes, his dad is Mick Jagger. Well, the, this teller can't believe and, and, and decides to go over to the bank manager. Well, she comes back and says, well, before you see the bank manager, I, I have to let you know that you're going to have to put something up for collateral. And so he pulls out this pink porcelain elephant. And, and he stated that it, it was from the 1600s and that it has quite a great deal, not only sentimental value, but it, it's got a great deal of uh, financial value to it. And so uh, Miss Wack takes the frog over to the, takes the elephant over to the bank manager and says, what do I do with this frog? I can't get him away. And, and here's his collateral. What, what is with this? And so the bank manager said, well, it's a knickknack, Patty Wack. Give the frog a loan. Because his man's a rolling, his dad's a, his old man is a rolling. Let me try that one again. It's a knickknack, Patty Whack. Give a frog a loan. His old man's a rolling stone. Yeah, I know, I know. Enough of those. Um, we're moving on. We're moving on to better things uh, as we get into God's word. Uh, this one comes, uh, Linda, Linda Holt, I'm glad you are here today because uh, Linda asked uh, a question uh, of um, sanctification. And uh, again, that's one of those nice uh, 25 cent uh, the theological words that we use. Um, and, and before we get into that, I, I want to share with you a passage that I've been sharing. Uh, thank you, Bill. Uh, yeah, I know I need a new joke writer. Uh, I want to share with you a passage that I've shared with the congregation. In fact, this was one of the readings of, uh, about a month or so ago. It comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, uh, beginning at verse 5. And I'm reading from the Beck translation. You see, we don't preach ourselves, but Jesus Christ as the Lord. And we are your servants for Jesus' sake. God who said, let light, light shine out of the dark has shown in our hearts to bring you the light of knowing God's glory in the face of Jesus Christ. We have this treasure in clay jars to show that its extraordinary power comes from God and not from us. In every way, we are hard pressed, but not crushed, in doubt, but not in despair, hunted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed. We are always carrying around the death of Jesus in our bodies so that you can see the life of Jesus in our bodies. While we're living, we're always being given up to die for Jesus so that you can see in our dying bodies the life of Jesus. 
So death is working in us, but life is working in you. It is written, I believed and so I spoke. Having the same spirit of faith, we also believe and so we speak. Because we know that he who raised the Lord Jesus will also raise us with Jesus and bring us with you before him. All this is to help you so that God's grace as it spreads will move more and more people to overflow with thanks to, the, to God's glory. That is why we are not discouraged. Indeed, we are not discouraged because this is what we proclaim. Uh, again, I thank God for these opportunities to continue to proclaim Jesus Christ as the, the doors themselves might be shuttered, as the buildings might be closed down, the church is not. Because we get to use opportunities like this uh, through uh, video uh, media, but also through the internet, through the written media, that we can proclaim this truth of Jesus Christ but I ask you the question, what are you spending your time listening to besides me and besides these other things? What, what are you taking the time to listen to these days? I know, Lisa, you talked about all the misinformation and conflicting information that's out there. So obviously, one of the things that uh, we are watching are those press conferences and, and the news and all those things. But what are you listening to? Even more so, what are you talking about? What are you talking about with, with the people who are in your house? What are you talking about with the people that you get over the phone? What are you talking about when you send out an email? What are you posting on Facebook? Are you posting the endless supply of things about the coronavirus? I'm tired of seeing those in my news feed. I, I'm, I'm getting to the point where I'm clicking them off all the time. But how many different things are we seeing about this coronavirus in our news feeds? How many of them are we reading? How many of them are we sharing with other people? But yes, uh, I am so thankful that here at All Saints, we have 14 now this week, 15 different opportunities and options that we are providing people to get fed with the word of God, that we get to proclaim Jesus Christ, that that which is our hope in the midst of times like these that he is our strength, he is our peace, he is our comfort, that we get to proclaim this in these moments. And, and, and as Paul says in this passage, it's the one who has shown in our hearts. He shines this light, as I preached this past week, the light that casts out darkness. As we live in this darkened, darkened world, as, as we live as, as sin impacts us, sometimes it's our own personal sin, but like with, with this case, it's the sin of the, being in this world, being in a broken and fallen world, that he casts out that darkness in order to give light to us. And it's the giving that light of that which is true knowledge, not all that knowledge that is out there that people are providing, and some of that is true. So we need to listen to it. But there is only one knowledge that is always true, and that's the knowledge of Jesus Christ who gives glory to God in that truth. And yes, we are jars of clay. And those of you who are really old, uh, remember that. Uh, there was a group called Jars of Clay, uh, based off of this passage, and, and some of their I love some of their music. Uh, got the chance to see them in concert a few times, but that's who we are. We're Jars of Clay, or as I remind my people, uh, we're cracked pots. Uh, but we have this treasure uh, that that is within us, as as Paul would say here. Uh, it reminds me of a story that I've shared. Uh, it's about uh, this young man over in India, and he had two water jars, uh, and he had a pole that, that he used to carry those two water jars. And so as he served his master, uh, he would go to the, the pond uh, with the fresh water. He'd do that in the morning and fill both water jars. Well, it seemed that when he walked back home, one jar would be full, the other jar would have lost half of its water. 
And, and so the one, the one jar was quite, quite proud of itself, knowing that he, he did a glorious work and he did exactly what he needed to do. And, and so he, he, he gained his, his self-worth through being able to do that. Well, obviously the one where, who lost the water wasn't feeling quite as um, good about himself. In fact, complain to the young boy that, you know, I, I, I'm just, I'm failing you. I'm failing you from being able to do your job. I'm letting you down. And so the young boy told the jar, you haven't let me down. Because I noticed over a period of time that you had been leaking your water. And what I did was... I planted some seeds, some some flowers, and and I want you to notice the next time we take the trip. And so the next day when they took the trip, he walked back and on the one side where the jar that was fully complete without any imperfections was, was just weeds. But on the other side, the side of the one with the crack in it, there were these beautiful flowers. And so that young boy said, this is what you have done. Because you have leaked your water, now not only do the flowers grow, but I'm able to beautify my master's house with it. For you see, it's not about the container. It's about what is contained in that container and what God can do with it. So it's not about me. It's not about you. No matter, no matter how well we can get our message across, no matter how eloquent, no matter how fancy, no matter how, whether you're the one in front of the camera like I am today or you're the one behind the camera. Maybe you're the one that can only type out an email and you're even wondering if that does any good. It's Remember, it's not about you. It's about what God can do with that word, what God can do with that treasure. And, and so uh, we hear in these words that it shows the extra nor extraordinary power that comes from God and not from us. And especially these words in a time like this. In every way, we are hard-pressed, but not crushed. We are in doubt, but not in despair. We are hunted, but not forsaken. We are struck down, but not destroyed. We are always carrying around the death of Jesus in our bodies so that the other can see the life of Jesus in our bodies. That's why we do this. That's why we come together. And at the end of this text, Paul says, I believe and so I speak. That's the Holy Spirit at work. As he works in my faith, as he works in this belief, so I speak. And it's not for me to be on the camera. It, it's for Jesus to be heard. It's for Jesus to be known. It's for that truth, especially in these times when you're feeling down, when, when, you're, when you're feeling a little bit anxious, when you're feeling hurting, where you're feeling hopeless, where you're feeling helpless. It's at these times where then Jesus Christ, who is our strength, who is our peace, who is our comfort, who is our light, can bring that which we need. And it's not only uh, for Christ's sake, but it's so that His grace may extend from us. As He fills us up, He fills us to the point of overflowing. That's always my prayer before I preach. Lord, empty me of my worldly things and pour Your Holy Spirit out upon me in such abundance that I may be poured out as a drink offering upon the faith of Your people. And all the more now as we're physically separated and physically distant from one another, that now our words can speak in its truth. 
whether it be done on the telephone, whether it be done in FaceTiming, whether it be done on, on an email, find those opportunities and find those people that need to be lifted up. Sometimes it might not be the person that you would think of. Sometimes it might just be a pastor in Blairsville, Georgia that gets that word that reminds him to keep carrying on. And so, as Paul ends this text, so don't lose heart. Well, as we move forward, uh, Linda, you, you asked about sanctification, and that passage is about sanctification. Because justification is not our work. Uh, Je Jesus Christ does all that. That's, that's, that's the beauty, is by Jesus' death and resurrection, Jesus did all that work of what we call justification. Uh, it's instantaneous. As, as soon as that work is done in, in our lives, whether it be through the hearing in our ears, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, or it's the waters of baptism that are poured out upon us. Uh, it's an instantaneous work. It, it, I, I would equate it to being a microwave work. It's boom, it's done. Justification, uh, as, as it is either heard or through baptism, it is done. But then you have sanctification. Uh, sanctification would be more crockpot work. It, it's it's got to take some time. Um, and the reality of it is, it's never really done. It's never really finished. Because that work of sanctification keeps going on slow and steady. As it slowly worked out, and in, in fact, in Philippians 2, that uh, passage that people struggle with, it's where work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Well, pastor, you just told me my salvation is based on Jesus Christ, and you said it's instantaneous. Well, the Paul, Paul realized that too. But it's that working out, it's that sanctified living. Uh, it, it's, it's that... that Belief coming in, that understanding is instantaneous in some ways. It's boom. It's in our hearts. It's in our minds. And then we have to work it out. We have to live it out. And as we live it out, then we get to see the nuances. You know, it's, it's like, a, it's like a, a, a rose. You see that rose. And it's a, it's a work of beauty. But then it, it starts to unfold and you get to see all the elements of its beauty as it unfolds. That's what sanctification is. The justification is the rose itself, but then the sanctification is that unfolding. And boy, uh, when I was a kid, I would try to unfold it myself. You can't do that. You've got to let God do that. And that's the work of the Holy Spirit in us. And that's the way the law works in us. It's that curb. That, that's that governmental use that sort of be for an orderly society. It's the mirror where we see our sinful self and we know, you know, I can't do this. I can't unfold it. No, I need, I need a Savior. I need a God who does this in my life. And that's the beauty of the third use of the, of the law is that rule or a guide that guides us as the Holy Spirit works within our lives. And so our good works should not be looked as an obligation because they don't earn us anything. Our good works are an opportunity. An opportunity for, for Jesus Christ to be revealed to others who are around us. As I've heard recently and I tried to use before, they're, they're get us, not got us. We get to do it. We don't got to do it. And so I, I know at, my, at the St. Louis Seminary, they're trying to get away from using the words justification and sanctification. Instead, they're trying to use the term passive righteousness and active righteousness. Passive righteousness is what God does in us. And then the active righteousness is that living out the faith. It's Galatians 2.20. It's no longer I who live, but Christ who, live, who lives in me. So Linda, I, I would even want to... Even, it, 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 I hope all of that makes some sense, but even if we want to go one step further, uh, justification is faith in Christ. Sanctification is faith for Christ. And what a wonderful work he does in us. Uh, as we have this joy in the midst of, of 
of this time that we that we know for certain to, we're going to get out of this even even if we succumb to the flu we're going to be out of this because we'll be in the arms of Jesus i'm looking forward to that day uh, I'm, I'm not anticipating that day to come anytime soon, but I know that no matter what happens, you know, as Paul would say, you know, whether, whether I live or whether I die, you know, God's work is going to be done. But right now, it's, it's to be here with you all. Uh, so, are there any questions? Uh, Linda, I see that, that, that you you're it's making sense for you uh but anybody else are there any other questions that you might have about this whole justification sanctification thing or or about the uh bible passage that i shared from from second corinthians 4 uh that jars of clay passage and yes thank you mary jean for the the tag going to youtube videos if you want to see jars of clay uh they've got some old concert uh footage there uh their early stuff uh, to me, was their their better stuff, but they had some other stuff later. Any other comments or questions that any of you might have? I'll wait to see if anything rolls. Well, seeing none, um, let us get to a time of prayer. Uh, get to a time of prayer where where we pray for the people of God. Uh, I've got some some prayers that I'm going to uh, lift up as I begin this moment of prayer. And then when I, when I go silent, then you all can start typing. And, and last week, we, I was blessed last week uh, by, by the number of you that lifted up names. And, and as those names scroll, we can all say those prayers. And some of those names I'm going to be repeating uh, today uh, as our time of prayer. So let us bow our heads. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we give you thanks. We thank you that uh, you uh, make us cracked pots. And even in our imperfections, even, even with those cracks, that you use them for your, your will, you use them for your work, you use, use them for your glory. So continue to use us in a way that your treasure that you have placed within us might be revealed to others so that they might know the truth. And Heavenly Father, we pray this day for those who are in your need. We pray for Tom Marion as he recovers from surgery. Uh, continue to, to knit and mend and heal him uh, as he had uh, surgery on his spine. And, and uh, we pray that that will help him to get back to regular uh, mobility. We pray for Richard and Rita Robinson as uh, Richard continues to uh, rehabilitate at home and Rita is caring for him. Uh, we ask that you give us strength during this time of physical distancing, that we don't get so consumed with that which uh, disrupts and disturbs us, but that we can see the joy of what you are giving to us. We thank you for the healing that you're providing for Judy Kirk and the, the possibility that she might be going home uh, within a week or so. And so uh, continue to make that happen. Be with Sally as she travels home from Houston after being there with Katie this week. Be with Jamie Boyer, who has uh, uh, silent requests that, uh, that we can lift up in, in his name. And we thank you for those from our congregation and other Union County churches that are making uh, medical masks for uh, the doctors and the nurses within Union County. And we pray for a mighty act to be done on their parts. And Heavenly Father, we lift up the names of those for whom we prayed last week, for Kaylee and Wesley and Isabella, for Ashley, for Noah, who is a first responder, first responder that has contracted the coronavirus, for those who are losing their employment, for the Bray's grandson, who is an EMT in Georgia, for Hope and Colette, for health care workers and first responders. And now we lift up those for whom we have uh, certain requests upon our hearts and on our minds.
Heavenly Father, all these things and any others. Uh, as those of you that continue to lift up your requests, keep typing them in. Uh, as we uh, lift these uh, prayers up to you, Heavenly Father, we know that as we cry out or call out to you, we know you hear our voices. We know that you act according to your good and gracious will and enable us to see those opportunities, not only how you are working, but how you might use us uh, to work for the sake of others, especially as, as we might be able to uh, order a meal from a restaurant or send an email to encourage uh, uh, somebody who is losing their employment or maybe uh, f phone calling somebody to see if there's something, some... Um, errands that we can run. He Heavenly Father, we know that as you work among us, as you use us to do your work among us, uh, we lift these all up in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, as we get close to concluding, I want to end with another psalm. It's Psalm 116. Uh, and this is the, the one that then we had a psalm about crying crying out. Now it's a psalm about calling on him. Psalm 116. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my pleas for mercy. Because he inclined his ear to me, therefore I will call on him as long as I live. The snares of death encompassed me. The pangs of Sheol laid hold on me. I suffered distress and anguish. Then I called on the name of the Lord. O Lord, I pray, deliver my soul. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Our God is merciful. The Lord preserves the simple. When I was brought low, he saved me. Return, O my soul, to your rest. For the Lord has dealt bountifully with you. For you have delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from, st from stumbling. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I believed even when I spoke. I am greatly afflicted. I said in my alarm, all mankind are liars. What shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, the son of your maid servant. You have loosed my bonds. I will offer to you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and grant you his peace. Amen. Before we sign off, there was one question uh, about Holy Week. Uh, Holy Week is in a week from now. Uh, what we, we will not be doing Palm Sunday uh, services. Uh, I will do this again on Palm Sunday, but then that the rest of that week, uh, Monday, which is our normal Jackson My teaching day, we're going we're going to be doing the Monday Thursday texts on that day about Holy Communion, and so uh, you'll be able to participate in that. Then Wednesday that week at 10 a.m. is the worship service time. And we're going to do our Monday Thursday worship service on Wednesday. So you'll have Monday Wednesday instead this year. Uh, and that will then part, we will, uh, the focus of that uh, service will be the 1 Corinthians 11 text, which I will be preaching on. Then Friday, which has been a normal teaching day, we're going to have a worship service on that. Friday at 10 o'clock will be a Good Friday service uh, in that time. And then on Sunday, Easter Sunday, we will have Easter Sunday worship service. And right now we haven't figured out it, figured it all out yet, but we're probably going to do it at 9 a.m. instead of this 1 p.m. time. Uh, and so if any of you have any comments in regards to that, just send me a message to my Rev Dave Weshi site. 
uh, Facebook page if you have any comments of if, the, if there's a preference between 9 a.m. or the 1 p.m. time and then that will help us to know but but Holy Week will will begin on that Monday not on Palm Sunday but on Monday so Monday we'll do uh, the lessons on on Monday Thursday uh, about Monday Thursday then on Wednesday we're going to do Monday Thursday worship on Friday we're going to do Good Friday worship and then on Easter Sunday we will do uh, Easter Sunday worship now I will tell you members of all saints uh, the one thing I am uh, planning on doing and Lisa this this involves you the Sunday we do get to gather for worship again I am planning to have worship to where it's going to be Easter Reformation and Christmas all rolled into one not that we're going to do all those different hymns we might who knows with me but we are going to make that a festival Sunday and it will probably be at 10 o'clock instead uh, because what I also want to not only have worship with Holy Communion but I also want to have a big lunch afterwards Lisa Lisa and Fellowship Committee we want to have that day that that uh, that whole day to be such a celebration of coming together again uh, and yes I know that as we get out of this some of these things that I'm doing now are going to continue on what exactly they will be I don't know but continue to pray that God leads us in in the directions on how best to do it uh, as we move forward but have uh, we, we we thank God for what he's doing in our lives and so uh, I just pray keep connected Keep connected into his word. Take advantage of those opportunities. I worshiped with Michael W. Smith last night. Uh, he had a, a worship uh, service uh, on his website. So that was wonderful for me to be filled during that time of just Michael W. Smith music. But let us look for those opportunities to stay connected. You've got me here on Sundays. You can go to the All Saints Lutheran uh, Church site, Facebook page on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 10 o'clock. We're looking for those opportunities. Plus, if you want to get the emails, send an email to aslconnecting at gmail.com and we'll send those out to you. Have a great rest of the afternoon. I'm psyched for this day. Go out and enjoy the weather. If you've got nice, warm, sunny weather, if you don't, enjoy the rest of your day. God bless and we'll see you next time. Bye.